It's like 8.15. The show opens to the public, I don't know, uh, maybe nine, but good morning. It looks good. I went to bed at midnight last night. Uh, my dad and Book were here until 3.30, and my dad was back here at six. He sent me a text about a PA thing. So they had a lot longer days than I did, but it's uh, really pretty amazing how fast this all comes together. Just kind of doing a sweep right now to see if there's anything we need to move or do before the show is open. Once the show is open, we can't move any cars. We kind of have to hammer it all out pretty quick. I just inadvertently slalomed all these tables. I didn't even realize it. <laughs> it's filled out really good. We forgot to take this rental Penske truck out of the building. It has air brakes and neither one of us know how to drive a vehicle with air brakes, so he's learning, I'm spotting. All right, uh, we just lowered the truck. It was way higher. It just lowered like six inches when he pushed the button. Oh, now it's raising. Something's happening. Hey, oh, you're good. You're good. You're good. You might want to go forward so you're not so tight on this pole. You're good. Golden! That was a lot less uh, exciting than I thought. Six years. Follow uh, you you have two. Totally out of it. Uh, during the summer, we were able to get it back. So one of the things that they do are unveilings. We've got four hours of cars never before shown. This is the first one. This is the first car that this girl's ever raced and her dad bought it for her as a surprise and just gave it to her she had no idea that they were doing it so pretty cool clean up for the next reveal but okay not much time this is very important to our family keeping youth involved in this and knowing that gender doesn't matter if you're racing a car so in 2019 this car was over in the barn vine section so paul had really paul did an amazing amount of research because nobody this car's history. There it is. Body number 001 from 1970. Uh, so that's a first GTO pilot car, like, ever. The cool thing about it, it has valved exhaust, which is like an option now that new cars have. Pretty neat that that's the, the guy that invented the exhaust valve or whatever is standing over there. And uh, he talked a little bit, uh, somebody else, some other executive or something is, is talking about it now, but pretty cool that the very first one is here. Another feature of the show is the stage with like presentations and stuff. Uh, the first one that uses a projector starts now in five minutes we forgot to put up the projector in the screen so that's what i did but as i was doing that this thing i actually have this exact same bike i mine has a not as cool of original tank but mine looks exactly like this i love it rob and kate are doing youth judging right now and they look adorable how you guys doing I don't remember if I showed this in another video, but Abby put my dad's head that I printed and gave her in their Daytona. <laughs> I bet I've had a hundred people come up to me and be like, did you put that in that car? So, Abby, well done on that. I'm not sure what I've recorded today. I, not very much, it's been a pretty busy day. The rest of this video is just gonna be some of my favorite cars from Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals. It's like eight o'clock right now, the show is closing, so there's lots of people leaving. Uh, so once that happens and the floor is opened up, I can drive my golf cart around again and give you some views of the cars <laughs> I like. <laughs> it's super hard to pick a few favorites, so one of the things my dad does is builds 
not, not even just the specific displays like class of 1970 or anything like that, but he'll put cars together based on some sort of significant feature or whatever. So when you drive through and look at this, like this is like a big body Chevy, big block row. So it's cool. These cars would be cool otherwise, but they're all together for a specific reason. This Challenger, there's so many things that make this thing sweet. Number one, steel wheels with hubcaps, gator grain top, but the flat hood. People always put like shaker or the double bubble twin snorkel hood or whatever on it. The Challenger flat hood is the coolest looking hood ever, I think. So this car is absolutely awesome. Semi GTX, 340 Super V71, triple black. more bikes showed up uh this is my ct70 this is i don't know what my favorite color is it's between this the yellow which there's one over there i'll walk over in a minute and the green i red is my least favorite color but this yamaha champ is really neat i've never seen this in person it's my dad's z50 oh there's two mini trails similar to mine This is ours also. It's the absolute sketchiest, scariest thing to drive. It's, first of all, this Predator 212 is a death machine, but it, go, it probably goes like 45 miles an hour and has a 94 mile turning radius. Like it doesn't steer at all. It's terrifying, but it's pretty fun. And I've only ever ridden it in here on these like kind of slippery floors. So maybe that adds to the horror. This is the CT70, really like this. I think it might come home with us, I'm not sure. Such a wild grouping of things. The style of the van matches my go-kart perfectly. These bikes are all like off-brand or mostly, I guess there's an orange gray right there, but like a swing bike. I tried to ride one of these when I was a kid. It was not easy. This is like the nicest Evil Knievel bike I've ever seen. My dad has a couple of these. I think they're pretty rare. A real Barn Pine Hemi Daytona. A real Ranchero GT Strobe Racing Boss 429. This car, I would say this is like, ironically the license plate on this is Holy Grail. This is like a Holy Grail type thing for me. I, I would say as far as M codes, as far as B bodies go, this would be my second favorite B body ever made. Super B, check. Uh, M code check, color check. My favorite would be, of course, 68 or 69 Roadrunner GTX V5 blue, blue interior, like what my dad had when I was a kid, but this would be a very close second. Four speed too. If I had this car, I wouldn't do a thing to it. I'd put different tires on it and drive it. I think this is just, like this would be so cool to take the pure stock bus car drags and stuff. Just drive it all summer, have so much fun with it. Ryan sent this link, uh, sent information about this car to me and uh, it's for sale. I had a, well, anybody has an opportunity to buy it. It's a pretty rare car, but the problem is, is if you restore it just totally back to stock, it's a 383 two barrel. So. 
kind of underwhelming in that respect. The color combination is what makes this thing incredible. Triple white, um, but yeah, 383 two barrel. It's like too rare of a car to make it something like pro touring, but too boring of a car to restore. Like even if it was a slant six, it'd be cool to do a slant six restoration, but for the amount of money it would take to buy the car and then the amount of money it would take to make it number one, safe to drive, but then number two, like nice, just would be tough. Be tough for me to convince my wife that that would be a sound financial decision. <laughs> Charger 500 barn find and a Superbird barn find. This one's pretty crazy. The nose was molded in. You know it's a real 500 because it's got the back window, like how a Daytona was too, flush instead of recessed. That's pretty cool. Car was buried in this barn. Yesterday, I was like, what in the world is this thing here for? Didn't look under the hood, just looked. It looks like it's just a beat up, crashed Impala, right? When you come over here, you can see, yep, it's a 427. This one does not seem like it would be very fun to have to push around either. Thank you to whoever brought this car here. It's a car from the cover of Ryan's book that he sold 30 copies of today in person, which is pretty awesome. He said he sold out. Would have sold more if he had more. Did you tell him to go on Amazon? Ryan just told me that when they bought the car, the ad, somebody had taken a picture of the car with a Camaro hood just resting on it like so dirt and junk wouldn't get under the hood so now because it was like that when they bought the car it, in the ad they put a Camaro hood on it just because it's funny which I think was pretty cool too this thing is gorgeous Matte red Camaro is really cool too. I wonder why it sits so high. Looks like it, a little bit lower would be perfect. So this is our buddy Brian and Ed's uh, group. I've known them like my entire life actually, for the most part, probably since I was about eight. Like my dad's best friend. Also the guy that's building the Hornet for us, or the group of guys that are putting the Hornet all back together for us. So excited to get that car back. Going to car shows like this makes me miss that car so much. Like it's such an experience to take an old car to a car show. It's it's just different. Like the Mercedes is fun and it's cool, but definitely more of an experience to drive like the Hornet or something like that. I wanna get more muscle cars. Laura, let's buy cars. such a crazy looking car like I can't picture a dealership or a, a manufacturer making something like this loud and selling it now like, just such a cool thing so crazy to see machines that are different colors too This is pretty cool. So we've got two Bush wheel cars, Mopar missile and Motown missile, a piece of toy. 
California Flash. So, oh, so we have three books of the old crowd. And the original Rod Shop Dog. Seven Chevy 150 business coupe. So it's a 283 with fuel injection, a 411 rear gear, radio delete, heater delete, only one sun visor, and no interior armrest. Rear seat delete in favor of cargo shelf. <laughs> Such a cool thing. One of 22 fuel injected business coupes built. I'm not a huge 57 Chevy fan, but like blacked out race car style is pretty neat. That's cool. Luke and I were just talking about this and I was like, is this original paint or what's going on here? So there's a storyboard in front of it, but basically this guy bought this car and somebody had painted it black, but under it was the original paint. So he spent like 1500 hours with thousand grit sandpaper and sanded all of the old paint off. So it is original paint. I just think it's a super cool body style too. There's a whole line of them. I mean, that's a hell of a line of Oldsmobiles, right? The open trunks kind of bum me out. Uh, that would have been a lot cooler if all their trunks were closed, but I think that was still pretty neat. These are some incredible cars. So these are all 442 W30s. So they made 54 442s in 1966 that were W30s. I don't know how many we have here, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, that one's a 67. So nine, 10, 11, and 12. About 12 of the original 54 W30 442s from 1966. That's pretty cool, huh? It's always cool when a car has a story. With Mopars, you never say never, but this is a one of one known in this color combo, Hemi Challenger. I mean, you can see why too. It's like, it's a pretty car, but man, what an awful color combination. Like this beige color and gold interior. Hemi Cornet RT convertible, four speed, no console. My favorite. 71 B body. I don't know if purple's the right color for, I mean, I, it's the correct color for this car. I don't know if it's like my favorite color for this car. Uh, this is super nice. B5 blue, Steelys, blue interior. Whoo! 446, four speed. Man, this car is perfect. These two cars came from British Columbia. So I think he said it was 3,400 miles they trailered these things here. Uh, drove through a blizzard with a whiteout. He said he had to hang out the window. The winds were so strong, they have a big trailer and it was pushing it, but they made it. So super cool. Uh, very glad to have them here. One of the features this year is a TA and AA Arcuda Invitational. So here's two right here. And then there's a bunch more over here. I'll show them all to you.
A lot of these cars came in private carrier, so I haven't seen many of them, but the Black Ghost, so this thing was like a street racing legend in Detroit. Super duper cool car. This one is very similar to the one the brothers have that came from the factory with a Hemi, but the hood. Another B5 Blue with a blue interior Mopar. This is the real Vanishing Point Challenger. Crazy enough, we have two GT500 Mustangs in orange, just like this, and we mixed them up when we put them in, so we had them in the wrong spots. Like one was in one's and the other was in the other guy's spot. This is the class of 70 display, so all of these cars are from 1970. The idea being like, if you went to a dealership in 1970, this is what you would have saw sitting on the lot. Obviously, this is like the prime of the prime examples of what you would have saw, so probably not a lot of like, small block cars and you know things like that but some pretty sweet stuff here another awesome story car david hakeem's 70 446 wayne state research roadrunner original paint still has the original doherty kill when rob and kate and i came past these ones they were like highlighter green Highlighter pink, highlighter purple, highlighter green, highlighter orange, highlighter purple. They loved it. So that is such a cool spread. We saw this one on Woodward, another awesome, awesome car. It's actually got like really cool motor stuff done to it, but he built, built the car to look stock. So my, not, it's not a new Hemi, it's like aluminum head motor and stuff like that, I think. Uh, I don't know if it's fuel injected, but whatever. I'm sure the sign says. Kate also loved this one because it had sparkle and flames, or as she called it, fire. This car is unrestored. 25,000 original miles. Gosh, I love blue. Love blue runners and steelies. Ooh, blue B-bodies with steelies is just where it's at though. This color looks crazy on these lights. This is owned by a younger guy too, that's pretty neat. This is a really cool car. So it's intent is to look stock, but obviously it's not. So they made these badges for it. Small letter polyglass, but L70 or L60. <laughs> look at those tires. Four speed also.
Tom Lembex Black Hemi 4-speed Daytona. This thing is an original owner, Hemi Daytona. <laughs> it's such a crazy thought to me that somebody still has this thing from 1969. I met the guy too, he's awesome. He's exactly who you would picture bought this car in 1969. Did I tell you guys, uh, they actually have two of these signs and I get to take one of them home because there's not a need for two of them here and they had to pay to store it or something. So I'm gonna put it in my shed, it's gonna be awesome. I wish the hood was open on this car. So wild, 444 barrel with a shaker. So this is the one I saw in the other video uh, where the guy told us that he knows that there's another one. This is a four speed and he said there's an automatic. So at least two were made, but what an odd car. Such a cool combo too, triple black. Copper interior. Oh, there's another AAR cooler. have a lot of Panther Pink cars this year. I guess Class of 70 and Class of 71, the only two years they made Panther Pink. Naturally, we would have a lot of pink cars. I just read this storyboard on the history of this car and it's incredible. So the guy that owns it now bought it when he was 17 years old and didn't know this, but turns out it's a one of one 65 Chevelle with a big block, 396, 425 and four speed. It's the only one they made in 1965. Uh, so he found it out because he saw a picture in a shop of somebody Z16 and he told him about his and the guy thought like, oh yeah, whatever kid. And then read a magazine article about it. Come to find out this was the mysterious car uh, and this guy had just happened to have it. He said, the story says he like took it on his honeymoon and all that kind of stuff. So pretty amazing uh, deal here. It's weird to think that these are nostalgia pro stock cars cause like they make me nostalgic and that makes me feel old. Uh, these cars are super sweet. Another rod shop car, obviously a much newer. Ten o'clock Saturday, these bozos are still working. <laughs> it's like midnight Saturday, and I just kind of want to show how crazy my obsession with the Crocs is. So these are the ones I've been wearing around the room. They're my new off-brand strapless fuzzy one but then I also have the original in black over here uh, also all of these are where I took them off <laughs> they're not I didn't place them like this for this video these are the ones I wore today and then these are the ones I wore during move-in which are my croc this is like the first pair I got so I feel like such a dork with these things but I love them 